I know we've been talking about these baby monster rumors for a while now, but wow. My jaw still dropped when the news hit. I don't think it's a coincidence that right after YG's probation sentence was announced this week, that we finally got a solid debut date for Baby Monster happening this month on November 27th. They immediately started releasing individual member teasers, with everyone wondering, will they drop a teaser for Ahyun? Because we have not seen a glimpse of her with the group for months now. Well, we didn't have to wait long for that answer. Last night, YG Entertainment stated that Baby Monster will now be debuting with six members because after careful discussions, it was decided that Ahyun should be focusing on getting rest due to health reasons. Notably, they ended the statement saying they will spare no support so that Ahyun can fully recover and return in good health. At first, reports stated that she left both Baby Monster and YG, then that she's not with Baby Monster but still in YG, and now some reports are saying that she's still in both but just won't be participating in their debut. So rather than speculate back and forth, I'd rather just look forward to their debut and we'll see what's in store for their future. Just like while everyone is celebrating Red Velvet finally coming back in our lives with new music and a full-fledged comeback, a detail during their promotion had people worried about their future with this possibly being their last. Like we always see with every group, their social media account was updated to go along with their album release, changing from their 2022 birthday comeback with the name and bio now reading, Happy Ending, It's Just a Story of Us. All of their story highlights highlights were also now gone. The rampant speculation caused by this resulted in them removing the happy ending caption, the highlights are now back, with SM actually having to come out and say, the happy ending phrase was changed to simply match the concept of their new album, seemingly denying the rumors. G-Dragon has also now denied new allegations, along with his first exclusive interview since the whole drug controversy. In the last video, we talked about him voluntarily showing up for 4 hours of questioning where the preliminary test came out negative. Interestingly, he left saying that he didn't think the investigation was unfair and that the police were just doing their job. However, a couple days later, reports started coming out saying that police implied that GD came with all of his body hair shaved or removed with the intention of tampering with evidence. GD's lawyer has now immediately denied this, threatening legal action, stating that during the questioning, GD told them he usually shaves his body hair anyway, but has not done Done so since the investigation was reported and has not even bleached or colored his hair in almost a year and a half. G Dragon's sister expressing her frustrations about these claims as well. On top of all this, GD responded to all the articles about his nonchalant behavior before the questioning, which some also interpreted as confidence, but according to G Dragon, it's because he was nervous, stating that he's just a human being and that was probably reflected in his behavior. The police have now also come out, denying the report, stating the hair on top of his head was sufficiently long and body hair samples weren't even necessary for the analysis. They also added that there are actually still no plans to have additional summons for GD either. Of course, in every video now, we always have some kind of health updates. BTS's RM just revealed an eye injury he sustained while filming because apparently the camera got too close, resulting in five stitches. Unfortunately, on their third anniversary, High Up Entertainment announced that Stacey's Yoon and Seyun visited a hospital in Japan and would be taking a a step back from their upcoming schedule. That makes a lot of sense seeing as how they were touring the US for most of October, which had a stop in Mexico for the special music bank right in the middle of it, then straight to London where they had a last minute visit to Scotland beforehand that we mentioned in the previous video, and then finally came back to Korea for a day only to fly to Japan right away. It was also just announced that Girls Generation's Tiffany will be taking a step back from all of her upcoming activities for about a month due to her own health condition. What we don't usually get is an announcement about an entire group's hiatus. Pink Fantasy's company released a very extensive announcement regarding the group's future, where after completing their schedules in December, starting in 2024, they will be temporarily suspending all team activities. Two members will be graduating from the group, but all of them will still be active as solos, units, or participate in other activities and events, along with their own personal endeavors, which was all laid out. In the case of Must Be though, their 
the company has now announced the termination of their exclusive contracts with the members after a mutual agreement. We will now have to wait and see if the members will stay together, but in a new company. And something that is more bittersweet, we got to see Monster X's show new shaving Hyungwon's head, with a lot of people like Exo Seumin coming out to send off Hyungwon, as he is now enlisted in the military. Finally, how long has it been 6 or 7 years now that Hyeri and actor Ryu Junyol have been public about their relationship after seeing them together on Reply 1988? Well, sadly, both respective agencies have confirmed that the couple, after so long, have now broken up. I think we could definitely use some positive things to celebrate in K-pop. Congrats to former Mblox Thunder and Gugudan's Mimi, who recently shared photos from their amazing looking wedding. We also got to see 21's Dara looking so happy for her little brother and now sister-in-law. Also congrats to Niju, who recently made their Korean debut, not only earning their first career music show number one, but becoming the first non-Korean group or group with no Korean members to win a music show. I love Niju, since their survival show, I'm so happy for them. Also happy for Astro's MJ, who gets to reunite with fans and his members, as he has now been discharged from the military. We've had giant comebacks, releases, so many debuts since the last video. Just to name a few, Ace coming back after two years, Omega X after everything they've been through, Soojin has finally, finally made her solo debut, NTX is back after a year, Kiss of Life continue their amazing rookie year, P1 Harmony drop Fall in Love again right before they're about to perform at iHeartRadio's Jingle Ball in the US, and my goodness, in a span of a few days, Days, we got Red Velvet, Espa, and Stray Kids. I'm sure we'll be talking about broken records and milestones for those artists very soon, but for right now, BTS's Jungkook's name has been established next to so many milestones just this past week. First Asian solo artist to take home the Best Song Grand Prize at the 2023 MTV EMAs, set the new record for the highest first week sale of any solo album, first Korean soloist to enter the top three of the UK's album chart, debuted at number two on the US's Billboard 200, and has broken two of size records as the Korean solo artist with the most Hot 100 entries and with the most top 10 hits. Despite just starting their careers, Zero Base One have already made history becoming the first group to surpass 2 million first week sales within the first year of their career. This is also their second consecutive double million selling album. And on the girl group side of things, you knew IVE was gonna make their mark. Now the first idol group to have 3 perfect all kills in a single calendar year. The only other artist to even accomplish this is IU. And to further put it in perspective, only six songs have even gotten a perfect all kill in 2023 so far. Seventeen were able to spread their positive message as the first K-pop artist to attend the UNESCO Youth Forum in Paris. Finally, how heartwarming was it to see Bang Yedam, who is about to make his solo debut, reunite with the Akmu siblings, a sight we have not really seen since 2012 when they were kids. I love seeing them recreate their iconic moments together, and you can tell how close they were and still are, otherwise Yedam would have never made this song. <laughs>